gardens of evergreens that you could put out, um, all different shapes and sizes. So we're just going to go through a few um, today and kind of how to use it and in and, and, and what situations. Um, before we start that, just a few housekeeping things because we are in monsoon season. Um, if you have not fertilized yet, which if you listen to Ken, you should have already done it. Um, but monsoon, so uh, monsoon season is a great time to get it in. The rains kind of help wash it down, get it to the plants so they can thrive and, and um, you can get brighter flowers, better vegetables, all that good stuff. Um, we are getting past the point of shock, like we said earlier in the conversation. Um, it's a great time to plant, so kind of keep that in mind when you're looking around. Um, bugs and diseases, um, that was last week's class, but just want to touch base with the extra community. Um, we're starting to see aphids and uh, spider mites. Uh, powdery mildew, uh, black spots showing up. So keep an eye on your plants and, and treat them accordingly uh, as you see fit. You don't want to do more than you have to, but keep an eye on your plants. It, it's just always a good thing. Um, humic. It, it's one of our, our products that we don't talk about enough, I don't think. It's a soil conditioner. Um, and it has all sorts of mycorrhizae and all sorts of good stuff that um, invite earthworms and things like that to your soil. So if you have that compact clay soil, and most of us do, um, it, it's a great soil conditioner to put on. Just like gypsum, you put it on a couple times a year and, and it'll make your soil much better for plants to live in. Okay, um, I think I'm going to start on this side and just kind of work my way down. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about is a Vanderbilt pine. Um, this is my favorite, one of my favorite pine trees, and I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this guy. Um, he is a kind of a medium-sized tree. Uh, he's going to get about 20 feet tall and about 10, 15 wide. So he's more narrow than a regular pine tree so he'll fit in some smaller lots um, and he's very very soft he's one that you don't mind hugging so you could be a tree hugger with this guy um, nice uh, multicolored needles is kind of his um, hallmark uh, characteristic um, very um, he gets pretty dense, um, but he does have open spaces, so um, plants where, you know, you can use the color. Uh, he's a limber pine, um, and like I said, he fills in very nicely, um, great contrast of colors. pull this guy because he's really heavy and he's got cords around him. Um, but this is a hoop blue spruce and I brought him out um, because we do carry a, a quite a few different varieties of blue spruce. Um, hoops and baccarat are one of the few um, spruces that are more narrow um, because I know a lot of us have more narrow lots. We don't have a lot of space to put a full bro 20 foot fat albert or a regular blue spruce. Um, some of these are going to stay in that 10 to 15 foot wide, so they're more narrow. Um, great blue spruce color, um, moderately slow growing, um, probably six, eight inches a year. Um, so, like you said, the best time to plant was 10 years ago. <laughs> Um, this guy here is the Hall Honeysuckle, um, and the great thing about this Hall's Japanese Honeysuckle, uh, he's evergreen. Um, he's one of the few lines that are actually evergreen. 
Um, so it leaves will stay nice and green, you get the beautiful blooms, um, and you can either use a trellis, uh, fencing, um, walk long if you strategically put some uh, concrete pins in. Um, you can trellis it up and it'll cover um, that area. Um, chain, link fence, chain link fences are great. Um, so he's a great, uh, he can be a great screen. Um, I've also seen this one done as a ground cover. Um, so you just take him off his uh, trellis and just let him do his thing on the ground. Um, I've also seen him shrugged up so people just kind of give him a nice trim. So he's a very versatile plant, um, can be used in a lot of different areas. And he smells wonderful. Yes. Um, this is a Catoni aster, and there are a, a, a lot of different Catoni asters out there. Um, most of us know the small, short ones that, you know, more ground cover. Um, this one is a Parnii uh, Catoni aster. Um, this he will get about six to eight feet tall. Um, very graceful branching, um, so he can take up a lot of space um, to give you that privacy angle in the yard. Um, little white flowers in the spring, um, tiny daisy white flowers, um, and then red berries in the fall. Um, in the winter time, he can give you some winter color as well. His leaves kind of turn purple. It's a really pretty plant. I brought a grape um, because uh, this year has been uh, pretty special in regards to essentials. Um, we sold vegetables like crazy this year because of everything that's going on. Um, and uh, planting food is always a great idea. If you can use um, grapes in your landscape, rosemary in your landscape, you can add different aspects to your landscape by just adding a grapevine because um, you can eat off of it. Um, grapevines grow pretty quickly um, and you can trellis them again on fences, trellises, uh, anything like that. Um, make a great screen like they're going to go dormant in the winter time but you still got the, the, the vines itself that will fill in some gaps. Um, this guy here is a burning bush. Um, everything is wet. Um, it keeps dripping on me. Um, burning bushes are going to get in that six to eight foot tall range. Um, the great thing about this is he turns bright red in the fall, which hence the name Burning Bush. Um, they are a fairly fast growing shrub um, and uh, very pretty drought tolerant as well. This is a chase tree. Um, this is a small, medium to small tree. Um, he will get in that 12 to 15 foot range. Um, really pretty because he has these gorgeous purple stalks. Um, kind of look like a, almost a Russian sage, but not as invasive as the Russian sage. Um, and you just limb him up so he has more um, multiple trunked, uh, so you can actually see the, the, the limbs and the, the, the bark on the tree. Uh, this guy is a wax leaf privet, and most people use these for hedging. Um, they get in that six foot tall range, eight foot sometimes, um, very trimmable. 
Um, but as a privacy hedge, most people don't want to trim. Uh, glossy green leaves, they are an evergreen, so they're going to keep their leaves all winter. Um, pretty vigorous grower once they get established, so they're going to grow pretty quickly for you. Um, as I said, uh, about six to eight feet tall and wide. This one here is one of our favorites. They're all over the place in Prescott and Prescott Valley. Um, this is a red tip Glutinia. Um, this is called the Red Dynamo, and this is a new variety that uh, Monrovia brought out uh, in the last couple of years. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more dense than the Frazier's Glutinia, which is the one we usually sell. A um, little bit uh, shorter. Uh, stretches of uh, branching so it'll fill in, stay nice and full and not get leggy on you. Um, still has the beautiful red tips when you do prune it. Um, most people do that in September, October, so they have all that beautiful new flush of growth in Christmas time. So you have this green and the beautiful red. Uh, he gets in that 8 to 12 or 8 to 10 foot tall range. He's a little bit shorter than the Frasers. The Frasers will get up to 15. Uh, this guy here is a Silver King Euonymus. Um, he's a little bit different because he's going to get in that six foot tall range, but only three wide. So it would be in a place where you just need to cover something small. Um, but if you put more than one together, they, they they have this beautiful color that, that would give you color all year round. Um, and with the variegation, it always brightens up an area, especially in the winter time. Um, this is a mint julep, juniper. Um, he again is going to get in that um, six foot tall range and about six, eight foot wide. Um, another one that, you know, find the right spot and if you're just trying to cover the streets or you know just put a little bit of barrier between you and your neighbor he's a great one um, he's an evergreen um, like most junipers most of them are pretty uh, animal resistant um, so most of them don't mess with it too much um, very very drought tolerant um, so he, he does really really well here um, and there are a lot of different types of junipers um, that can work just like this. Um, it just kind of depends on the size that you're looking for. Um, and so you can uh, plant accordingly. This guy here is an Arizona cypress. Um, he will get in that 20, 25 foot tall range and about 15 to 25 wide. Uh, so if you have a large area that you need to cover uh, a neighbor's yard or RV or whatever, he's a great one to do. Um, this is one of the fastest growing trees uh, that we sell. Um, so he will fill out really quickly once they're established, uh, usually about 18 inches a year. Um, the Arizona Cypress also comes in the blue ice variety, which has that really pretty, almost blue spruce looking color. Um, and the needles um, are actually a little bit different on it. Really pretty plant. Um, so if you have that situation where you need to put a privacy screen, um, it's a great one. Uh, I did a, a yard not too long ago where we did uh, the Spartan Juniper um, we did three Spartans and two blue ice and it was just gorgeous because you had the dark green and then the light blue and it, it just was spectacular. So this guy here is a trumpet vine. Um, very, very pretty flowers. The hummingbirds love this guy. Um, the, the, only bad thing about him is that he is a, a deciduous, so he will lose his leaves. 
Um, but you'll come back next year and get even bigger. Um, sometimes I suggest if you have enough space uh, to plant him with a house honeysuckle, you kind of get that mixed um, binding situation and that way you get some evergreen with it and, and still get these gorgeous flowers here. Very invasive. They are kind of invasive, very, so put them in, in a place where you don't <laughs> mind them. Um, and they also attract bees, so I wouldn't put it in next to the front and go. So this is a Wichita Blue Juniper. Um, he is going to get about 10 to 12 foot tall and four to six wide. Um, he is a moderately fast grower, um, so he, he will get some space. And like I said, you can mix them up. Um, the Spartan has the same size characteristics, but he's a bright green color. Um, again, but he's, he's basically that color. Um, so great contrast of color and, and a great way to use that different textures and colors in your yard. This is another pine tree. Um, this is a Bosnian pine and I brought him uh, because he's another narrow tree. Um, he's only going to get in that 10 to 12 foot wide range, uh, so he will fit in a lot of different smaller yard situations. Um, moderate grower, um, going to get in that 12, uh, 20 to 25 foot tall. Uh, great little pine tree. Um, the Austrian pine is an, also another great uh, pine tree. Austrian pines are very fast growing, so uh, about 18 inches a year. Um, the Austrian pines will get about 30 by 30, uh, so it's a great privacy tree as well. Um, blue spruce, you can definitely do a regular blue spruce if your yard or your lot um, has that space for it. Um, most of your spruces are slower growing um, in that six to eight inches a year, um, but the, like I said, the Austrian pine will grow in that 12 foot or 12 inches a year. 12 foot, that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, uh, the other, uh, there are other different trees um, that will work. Um, like I said, the Arizona cypress comes in three different styles. It has the, the regular Arizona cypress, the blue ice, and then there is a chaparral, which is kind of the sage and green color. Um, so those are really, really nice. Um, blue spruce, uh, there are different sizes. There's a baby blue ice that gets in that 20 foot tall um, and about 10 wide. Uh, so if you want a smaller tree, the baby blue eyes is a better one for you. Um, the uh, Oregon green pine is pretty sim similar to the Bosnian, um, a little bit shorter needles on him, um, also a little bit more narrow, so in that 10 to 15 wide range, so it'll fit into more spaces better. Um, if you need something smaller, if you just need something tall just to block out a window or something, um, there are blue arrow junipers uh, that get 12 to 15 foot tall and about three wide. So if you have a very narrow space and just need something to block, you could definitely use that. Um, we just got in some gorgeous Medoras that were too big for me to bring in here and actually move around. So I just left them outside the door, but the Medoras are like the blue arrows. They're, they're going to get in that 10 to 12 foot tall and three wide. So a, another great plant for smaller areas. Uh, Arizona, or Italian Cypress is another one that would work uh, for that type of situation. Um, you just have to be careful with the Italian cypress because they do get very large as far as tall, um, but about 
two or three feet wide max. Um, and I have seen one, some that the deer or something has eaten half of it up. So be careful with those if you have animals in your situation. Um, back to the shade trees, uh, they also make great privacy. Um, and it, it, you can find a tree that is going to fit your specific spot. So when you're looking at privacy, think about how much space you actually have to fill and, and how big you want it to be when it throws up. Um, I've seen a lot of people just put stuff in a spot and I'm not going to be there in three years. I don't care. And, and so you've got this huge tree right next to the house and, and it's like, oh man, we're going to have to pull that tree because it's just not going to work for you. So really kind of think about where you're going to put stuff um, and, and kind of plan accordingly where, where you want stuff to grow. Um, if you are kind of creating a, a barrier, you know, start with the bigger stuff in the back and then work smaller just to give you some extra color and texture with that. Anybody have any questions? How do you plant them? Okay, good question. Uh, she asked how you plant in, in, in this area. Um, I don't know if anybody's dug a hole in this area. <laughs> it, it is not real easy. Um, so um, when you're going to plant something, you want to dig the hole twice or three times as wide as the top that it's in and just as deep. That just as deep is really, really important. And a lot of people ask me why, um, because our soil is so bad, why not dig it down just to give you some more air and, and stuff. But because of our, the way our ground settles, if you dig it down too far and that settles, you can drown your plant. Because right now, when that water kind of gets in there, um, you can get rot around the base of your tree so if you have a well in your if any of your trees are planted in a well like this it's not a good thing um, because you want that even um, having a, a, a seam around the edges is great um, so you can have water kind of sit there when you're doing actually watering um, but you want it to drain if you have a deep well it'll start rotting the, the, the tissue on the crown of your tree. So you just don't want that. Um, so when you plant just as deep, so when you pull him out of the root ball, he, he's actually sitting about here. Um, make sure he is sitting there even with the top of the soil. If he is a little high, that is okay um, because it allows it to drain. Plants need to breathe, and it's really, really important for them to breathe. Um, you can always kind of add soil to the top of them and just kind of mound them up. Um, some people actually have bedrock underneath them where they won't, it won't drain at all. And the thing with that is that you want to, actually you'll end up having to create a berm of some sort so you will have that extra drainage. Um, when you plant, you're going to use two-thirds of the natural soil because this tree needs to learn how to live where you're at. Um, so we want to use that natural soil, but we just want to amend it with our mulch. Um, and, and that gives it enough um, moisture holding power to, to get it through the tough times. Um, if you have clay, it'll help break that clay up. Um, if you're sitting on DG, it'll give it uh, some holding power to keep moisture in that area. Um, then you're going to backfill your hole and then add uh, the fertilizer and then water it in really good. And as you're watering it in, make sure you're tamping it down uh, to get uh, so you don't have air pockets. Um, some air is good, but you don't want big gaps, so you, you get those 
holes in your crown. You want it nice and level. Um, and then the last thing you'll do is uh, add the root and grow to it. Um, root and grow has a small numbers of, of the NPK, um, but it also has micronutrients in here that take out transplant shock, um, and it helps uh, get those hair roots stimulated. Um, so this is a great thing to use. Um, the other thing when you're planting is if it is a tree, you definitely want to stake it. Um, with our winds, it's very, very important to stake your trees. Um, if you do not, um, you're going to have a tree that eventually will probably come out of its hole because it's going to rock too much. And the most important thing about staking is that we want the tree to move some um, because that gives them a strong trunk, um, but you don't want the, the, the root ball to move. And, and that's the important thing because if the root ball starts to move, you're tearing up the roots from the bottom and you just have to kind of start over. So um, usually I say take the stakes out after a year. Here I say two. Um, and that there's mixed spots on that, but I, I say better to be safe than sorry. So, um, great question, thank you. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I have two questions. Sure. Um, one is I have some red chips that to me that were planted about a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. And they were planted to um, what do you, they seem to be growing okay, but would you recommend that I try to build up the soil a little bit at this point? I mean, they're literally like they're in huge wells. Okay. Um, um, her question was she had some uh, red tip petunias uh, that were planted too deep, so she has that kind of a well area. Um, if it was me, i just kind of work some of that soil out from the edges, so you kind of okay. leveling it off. Yeah. So not really adding up. Not adding up, because but if you add dirt to the top, you can rot well, more that's of the ground, too. Yeah, so, so just, just throw it away, okay. and, and it should be okay. Okay. Yeah. And then if we have water to plant, um, uh, say any kind of a, a bush or not necessarily a tree, would they be doing the amendments that you're recommending as well? Yes. Um, so she was asking how Waters goes about planting. And yeah, we, um, when you purchase our planting service, um, we bring all the soil amendments, uh, the mulch, the fertilizer, the root and grow. We'll also stake it for you. So all of that comes with the planting. Um, so yeah, we'll do it all. Good. Do you have a compost product that you sell here? So our premium mulch is our compost. Okay. Yeah, it, okay. it's not uh, mulch as the wood chips. Uh, we actually see South Cedar Bark as our wood chips. Okay. Our, our premium mulch is our compost product. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Can we buy the straps that go around? Can we buy those separately? Yes. Yes. Um, her question was, do we sell the, the V straps? And yes, we do. Um, and, and they're great because they have two grommets on both sides. So the they're basically a V. Um, so you put the, the tr trunk of the tree on inside, and then you just grommet it to the, the, the watch holes or two posts or whatever you're using. Um, and, and they're not tight, which is a good thing. You don't want tightness around any tree um, because it, it can strangle it. Um, so it's really important um, if you buy a tree that actually has a stake in it, I say once you get it staked yourself, take that uh, stake that's holding that tree up out um, because if you forget about it, it can girdle. Um, I've seen hoses that were inside and the tree just kind of enveloped it. Um, eventually, and it kind of depends on how bad it was, but I've seen them just strangle. So you have this little bitty thing and then you've got this tree and then it finally breaks. So it's really important to make sure that you take all that stuff off. Yeah. Question one, uh, was which of these plants are evergreen and which are not? 
um, and which are near proof and which are not. So I just have the two that are deciduous here, and it would be this chase tree, and uh, actually three, sorry, um, the trumpet vine and the grapevine. Uh, those are the three that are um, deciduous and that will lose their leaf. Um, the chase tree is near resistant, so this one is a good uh, one for if you have animals and such in your area. Uh, the grapevine will get munched on. Uh, the trumpet vine is pretty tolerant uh, of it. Um, I've seen them munch a little bit, but usually they leave the majority of it alone. Um, anything that has an odor to it, like the Arizona cypress, is a good one for animals. Uh, the honeysuckle is another one that's good for animals. Uh, the Katoni asters are animal proof as well. Uh, burning bush, anything in the Euonymus family is not. Um, it's actually like saying the buffet is open. Um, so the burning bush will invite critters. Um, I've actually seen critters uh, chew on the cotinias. Um, usually they won't take it down to the ground, but I've had a few customers say that they came, a whole herd came through and it was gone. Um, the Silver King is another euonymus, so it is a buffet item. Um, like I said, most of your junipers are pretty good um, as far as most of that. Um, as far as critters go, you know, fencing works really well um, in some situations. Um, I've had people tell me that whip wrap uh, underneath trees, um, if you have apple and pear trees or, you know, fruit trees, deciduous trees, um, they don't like that sharp edged rock that the whip wrap has. And it's a much nicer look than the fencing around the, the trunks of the trees. So um, there are ways of getting around it. Um, so um, we can help you with that as well. Yes. Her, her question was, is that she uh, has a lilac uh, that she planted, what, three months ago, four months ago? Um, and the buds died off because of a frost. Um, and it's just not thriving. My guess, and it's out on the edges of our lawn, my guess is it's probably getting a little bit too much water, especially if you're watering uh, your lawn daily. Um, okay, right. Um, so kind of be careful if you plant um, around edges of lawns or in, you know, if you have a tree in the lawn, you kind of got to count some of that moisture as its normal watering part. So be cautious when doing that. I mean, it's always nice to have a nice tree in the middle of your yard lawn, but just know that you're gonna to have to uh, compensate with the watering uh, so it doesn't get too much. With it. No, lilacs are very, very drought tolerant, so. Um, that would be my guess that as far as not thriving and, and we do as people we, we want instant gratification um, it's one of those things that we just we learn to want um, but plants take time to get established and especially in our conditions I mean it, it's not easy here we, we're asking a lot of plants um, so be patient um, give it some time um, and, and he'll be better next year. And like I said, just back off the water. So, so with a lilac, uh, pruning, as soon as it's done blooming is when you cut it off. So if it didn't bloom, that's a great time to prune it up, get rid of it because any new growth is your new bud. So, you know, you don't want to do it now where you're going to be cutting off your next year's bud. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have some of those dwarf spruce in the backyard. Mm -hmm. They look like Christmas trees and they get about six feet tall. Mm -hmm. 
they are getting out of hand, and I want to tear them down. You know, that means they're like this. Um, can I do that this time of year, or do you have to do it in the spring before the new growth comes out? Um, so it sounds like you have an Alberta spruce, four yeah. Alberta spruce, um, and she was wondering about trimming it down. Um, so basically, with the Alberta spruces, um, I would wait till a little bit in the fall because um, they're still going through their growing season. So do it in the fall. Just do a trim. Um, you never want to take more than a third when you're pruning. So just do a little haircut now and then maybe in February do a little bit more and then yeah. Should I be putting that oil on them in the fall? They are just a pain with the spider mites. They're a spider mite attractive. Yeah. Um, her, her question was or about putting the dormant oil or the triple action with her trees. Um, if anybody doesn't know about uh, Alberta spruces, um, they, spider mites is one of their biggest predators on there. Um, so keep an eye on it. Um, like I said, I don't usually spray unless I have to. So if you start seeing brown spots, go ahead and spray. But be careful with oils, they will burn your plants. Any other questions on privacy fences? Um, so um, basically have a, a, a berm and then he's got a road that's kind of getting more and more traffic uh, going by and he's wondering how to go about planting. Um, so it kind of depends on how fast you want things to grow. Um, I always recommend kind of mixing plants up to a point. Um, if anybody's ever been down Pioneer Parkway, all the lumen cypress that everybody planted to give privacy on that road, um, a disease came through and basically wiped everything out. So it, it's really kind of important to mix it up a little bit so you don't lose everything all at once. Um, because some things happen and, and diseases come through um, and, and we just don't know. So um, I would, and it kind of depends on how much space you have. And if you want to get with me in, in a little while, I'd be happy to, to go into further, you know, as far as what you're looking at and actually how much space you have. Because there's a lot of trees that can work for you. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. You bet. What about pinion pine? Um, this question was is about pinion pines as far as a privacy screen. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, pinion pines um, are a very slow growing tree, which is one of the reasons I didn't bring them in. Um, because most of us want instant satisfaction, but it would definitely work if you have the time and the patience for uh, that. And we, we just got a new truckload of uh, pinions in. They're kind of small, but they'll get there eventually. But they're really pretty trees, very drought tolerant. Um, they do get pine scale, which we just treat once a year and then it's good to go. Um, most spruces are really, really drought tolerant, so once a week watering is usually plenty for them. Um, and, and that goes for pretty much any established trait. You don't have to water as often as you think you do here. Um, as long as you're watering deeply, once a week is plenty. Any, uh, we, we just planted it like yeah. two months ago. Okay, so, so usually newly planted trees we recommend twice a week. Um, and that's going to depend on your soil as well. Um, which is really hard for us to say, okay, you're going to water this this often, this much, and how often. Um, but if you have heavy clay soil, that clay is going to hold that moisture in more. Um, whereas if you have just DG, it's going to drain much quicker. And that twice a week is probably necessary. So it kind of depends on that situation. And, and don't be worried about popping a screwdriver or a piece of rebar in just to see what it's like down there. Um, because most things will actually stay moist down there. Other question is on that same side of the house, which gets massive sun. We planted some lavender a couple <laughs> months back, and it, the leaves are always green. It looks happy, but it never gets the lavender flowers back. 
So she's got some lavender that just hasn't bloomed and, and it could be just, it, I congratulate you. Lavender's one of those plants I shouldn't say. I, I kill every time I get it. Um, <laughs> I can't grow it, um, but um, it, as long as it's green and healthy, uh, sometimes just planting it. Um, usually lavender has a couple of seasons worth of bloom, so give it some time. Usually you'll get a second blossom um, more in the fall, August, September-ish. So it, it should shoot up. If you haven't fertilized, go ahead and fertilize, and that'll help bring that out. We cut off all the dead yeah. flowers. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. definitely. Deadheading always uh, helps bring new stuff back. Michelle, is that something flower power would help? Good thought, yeah. I forgot about flower power. Flower power has a very high middle number, which is the phosphorus, um, that helps bring um, blooms into to place. Um, it's a liquid that um, uh, is water soluble and you just pour it on every two weeks as you're watering. Yeah, as it's watered, yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, I guess we will call it a day and thank you guys all for coming. And like I said, if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to answer it. Um, if there's a line here, Doug, Lisa, Tanner here, so don't hesitate to ask any of us. So thank you for coming.